want to speak to you real briefly this morning uh, on you know I want to speak on 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 speak to you this morning out of a proverb that is known as the troublemaker's proverb. <laughs> Amen? And uh, it's found in the book of Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to just read two or three scriptures, but I encourage you to go and read the entire chapter it is called the Troublemakers Proverb. Amen? Amen? And please note that I want to speak to you in order to build you up. Amen? Amen? And do you know you can't fix something if you don't know it exists? Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we have to uh, acknowledge that things exist before we can ever fix them. Amen? As a matter of fact, if you've ever been to an AA program or a Celebrate Recovery program or a Narcotic Anonymous program or all them other programs, the first principle is to acknowledge that I have a problem. Amen? Yeah. And please be mindful with me this morning that I'm not trying to acknowledge that we have a problem. I'm trying to acknowledge the need for repentance. Yeah. Amen? Follow me. This is some good stuff right here. And as your pastor, one of my greatest desires is to see you excel in every aspect of your life. Amen. So even though the topic may come off a little harsh, uh, please understand that I have nothing but love for you. And my desire is to see you walk in the fullness and the maturity of God. Amen. Amen. And if there is something that you do not understand today, all you have to do is ask of the Lord because he says, if any man lack wisdom, yeah. let him ask, and I give without partiality. Yeah. Amen? Right. Are you with me? Amen? Amen? Let's bow our heads this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your unconditional love for your church, Father. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, that you loved us so much, Father, that you speak to us, Lord, that we may correct, that we may... Uh, instill, Lord Heavenly Father, habits that will grow us and excel us in the things that you've called of us. In Christ's name, we ask that you anoint this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to speak to you about the topic of pride. Come on, say pride with me. Pride. How many you know that the Lord... Uh, knows that we are sinners. Amen? That's why he came. Yeah. Right? He says that, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? But he also knows that we can be some prideful folks. Uh, amen? And there is a difference between saying I am a sinner and knowing I'm just flat out. Amen? Yeah. Come on, this is Amen. good. Pride. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6. Let's read 16 through 19. Look at the verse, the first portion mm -hmm. of that. These six things the Lord hates. Wow. Look at the the, the language there. These six things the Lord hates. 
And then he goes on to say, yes, seven are an abomination to him. Mm. And then he comes with the list. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift in running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies. And one who sows discord among the yeah. Amen. Think of those scriptures right there. And think about the things that the author is writing. He uses some very profound words like hate and abomination unto the Lord. Amen? So what is pride? Amen? What is pride? And to wrap it up in two words, it's this. It's self-worship. Mm. Follow me. Pride is also a feeling of deep satisfaction stemming from one's self. Amen? Come on. Yeah. Don't be so down on me. It is also thinking of yourself in such a way that you think others should think the same. Yeah. Mm. You think so highly of yourself that you think I ought to think the same way. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. That's pride. Amen? A proud look. It puts you in the mindset that everyone should join your personal party. <laughs> Follow me. Pride is also self-importance or self-focus. Pride produces selfishness. And selfishness, listen, selfishness is contrary to the characteristics of Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Now, let me add this. Pride is, can be a good thing. Amen? Depending on how it's channeled. The Apostle Paul said, I don't boast on myself. I boast on Christ. It's good to be excited because you've accomplished something. It's good to be excited because I've overcome something. It's good to be excited because I am no longer who I used to be. So I walk with my head up, my chin up, my chest out, and I walk with my foot forward. I stand in confidence because I know that if it had not been for Jesus, I don't know where I would be at this morning. Amen? Amen. So it's okay to have pride in that aspect, but don't get so caught up in yourself that you think the whole church ought to act like you. <coughs> Amen? It's some good stuff right here. Don't be so prideful. Amen? But be happy that I've done something. Be happy that I've, I've fought my fight. I've, I've, I've made it. I'm overcoming. I'm reaching perfection. Be excited about these things, but don't allow them. How, you know how they say it? Blow your ego up. Amen? Come on. Seven things, he says, are an abomination <coughs> to God. And if there is any giving thing that can separate us from God, it is a proud look. <coughs> Amen? Look what he says. These things are extremely offensive. That's what abomination means. Detestable 
to God. It's an extreme offense to God. Amen? Are you with me? Yeah. Israel's seven deadly sins right here. Seven of them, Julian, <coughs> that the Lord did not. And did you know that five of those sins had to do with your body? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. What did he say? A proud look. Haughty eyes. A proud look, he says. The last two had to do with the type of person. Amen? Follow me here. This is good. Haughty, a proud look, exalts self over others. A lying tongue that spreads falsehood, manipulating others. Hands that shed innocent blood. Bullying and provoking folks that don't deserve it. Bullying or provoking folks that don't know or have anything to do with you. Amen? This is what, what, what the author is saying. Hands that shed innocent blood. Bullying and provoking when one doesn't deserve it. I think of it like uh, someone trying to throw their weight around just because I can. Yeah. Uh, just because I have authority over you. Mm -hmm. Just because I can speak more eloquent than you. Just because I can run faster than you. Just because uh, they shed innocent blood. A heart that devises evil. Wow. Creating conflict, devising evil at the expense of someone else. Isn't that good? This is challenging here. Because I believe every one of us fall into one of these categories. Truth be told. Amen? One that devises evil at someone else's expense. How about feet that rapidly run to evil? I can't wait for something negative to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there waiting on him to fumble the ball. I'm just waiting for him to trip up on something. Mm -hmm. Amen? Wow. All of these things right here, contrary to the characteristics or the attribute of our loving Jesus Christ who became all for us, gave all for you this morning, church. How many know that the Lord desires that we emulate His characteristics, not our very own? Amen. Amen. And if you study the scripture, whether in Ezekiel 28 or Isaiah 14, you learn that the enemy was cast down from the heavens not because he had rubies on or because he could sing, simply because he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be the ruler of himself. Yeah. Amen? A false witness, one who perjures himself to prevent justice. One who sows discord among the brethren. A bond breaker. Come on now. Who said unity? You said unity this morning. Unity. Amen. One who sows discord. His job is to break the unity in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who can't stand for relationships to be built, relationships to prosper. A person of these characteristics look for trouble in others and desire. And I'm here to tell you this morning, church, as your pastor, that any one of these seven, without true repentance, you are an abomination to the Lord. Amen. I know that's strong. I, amen. I was digging a 
doing some plumbing in my house yesterday. And that's when I, I felt the Lord drop this in my spirit. One word. Pride. And I asked myself, what can separate me from the love of God? And the answer was pride. Why? Because it's self-induced. You choose it. You choose to do it. We are sinners by nature. We choose to be proud. Amen? Amen. Go to Psalm 110. For me. Go to Psalm 10 with me. Psalm chapter 10. This is some good stuff. I encourage you to study this. Like I said, just to build, create awareness of our lives. Amen. Psalm 10. I'm going to read 4 through 7. Look what it says. The wicked and his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. Wow. Think about this right here. A wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. Even though he prospers, guess what's the farthest thing from their mind? The psalmist is writing. It's God. It's the ways of God. The things of God. The commandments of God. The decrees of God. Why? He says it because of a proud countenance. No reverence for God. It's almost as if I take advantage of God's grace and God's mercy. I take advantage to Him just thinking that if I can just do it my way today, tomorrow I'll go to Bible study and be forgiven of it. But the Scripture says that you will eventually say there is no God and the judgments and the con condemnation of God slips your mind and you're no longer focused on the things that God has called you to be. You're focused on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is good. Pride begins to manifest in a man's life. Eventually the heart becomes hardened and God is eventually the last thing on a person's mind. Wow. How sad. But can I tell you this morning? <coughs> Repentance is available for all of us. Amen. Amen. Go to Proverbs 16. One more scripture, and then we're going to shift gears. Proverbs 16. Verse 18. Pride goes before destruction, and the haughty spirit before a fall. This scripture sums up the scripture I just read in Psalm 10. Because the first thing that happens is your pride is uh, kind of like the blowfish. Amen? It just poof. It says, and then comes destruction. Amen? Can I tell you this morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, 
that it is better to be of humble spirit with the lowly. Oh no, but hey, you know what? Uh, it was 18. Oh, uh, was that 18? Yeah, I'm going to read 19. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Listen to this. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. I'd rather have a little bit in humility than a lot of bit in pride. Wow. Think about this. If I have a hundred and you have a thousand, I have a hundred in humility and you have a prideful thousand, chances are my hundred will outlast your thousand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because pride, listen to this, pride shortens the lifespan of the blessing. Yeah. Amen? Amen. It is better to have a hundred in humility than a thousand prideful because the hundred will outlive the thousand in pride. This is what he says right here. It's better to live uh, humbly with the lowly than to be dividing the spoil with the proud. Amen? So can I tell you this morning? That pride... Sucks it out of it. It just takes it from you. Now let's shift gears a little bit. And let's talk about the opposite of pride, which is humility. The opposite of humility. Proverbs 29. Go with me, please. Proverbs 29, 23. Here's another one. A man's pride will bring him low. But the humble in spirit will retain honor. Wow. <clears throat> you will retain honor. Mm -hmm. Wow. A man's pride brings him low, but the humble in spirit retain honor. So if I have a hundred and you have a thousand, guess what happens? Your flesh craves, listen, your flesh craves exaltation. Mm -hmm. If you have more than the brother next to you, your flesh will want to be acknowledged. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. You might be a good person, but your flesh, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we take those thoughts captive, bringing them into the submission of Christ Jesus, into the obedience of Christ. It's important not to allow yourself to fall in the trap of a prideful, <clears throat> craving exaltation. Because we learn that a proud man or woman will depend on themselves. But a humble man depends on God. Amen. Brother Tito said, I'm glad God took care of what I could not. A proud man depends on himself. A humble man depends on God. The proud man depends 
on their job, which may run out. But the humble man depends on God, who owns the cattle on a thousand. Follow me here. There's a big difference here. I may be broke here on this earth. Uh, oh, but my father got a meat packing place in the heavens. Amen. There is something about my God. See, a prideful man will put their eyes on their earthly treasure. But a humble man looks up to the heavens and stores everything over there where rust and moth cannot destroy. And that stinking devil can't stick his face in there and take nothing that belongs to me or my family. Amen. 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 There's a difference between a prideful man and a humble man. Oh, a prideful man, listen to this, would depend on what others say. Oh, but a humble man says uh, it's all about what God says about me. Amen. Uh, a, a prideful man says, I'm all this and a bag of chips. Uh, a humble man says, apart from God, I am nothing but a mere man destined for the gates of hell. But if it had not been for my God, Amen. Amen. There's a difference between a humble man and a prideful man. Amen. And this morning I pray that you will sit down and do some soul searching and ask yourself, what is it, Lord, that needs to be changed? In my Come on now. Proud says, I am all this. The humble man says, apart from God, I am nothing. Go to James with me, and I'm going to get out of your way this morning. We're going to have communion this morning. Begin to prepare your heart this morning. Amen. Go to the book of James with me. I'm going to give you some good news. Excuse me. James chapter 4. Thank you, Father, this morning for this word, Father. James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. And the word of God reads, my, my, my caption says, humility cures worldliness. Mm. Look at the scripture before that says, but he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. But look at verse 7. Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, your double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Amen. The Bible says that if a man exalts himself, he shall be brought down low. Amen. But if a man humbles himself, he will be exalted by God. Amen. You want to lift yourself up? Allow the Lord to do the lifting. Amen. <laughs> Allow Him to lift you. Allow him to do what he does best. And if you didn't quite catch it here, there's seven things here that James is teaching us to do. Amen? Because we are in a spiritual tug of war. The enemy wants you to think it's all about you, and God wants you to understand that it's all about him. Amen? It is a spiritual tug of war. The Bible says that your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Amen? And the enemy wants to steal from you by a simply thinking that you are all that. In a bag of crackings. We already know that pride lowers us. Humility lifts us up. And James says, submit yourself to God. Just be faithful, church. 
That's what submit means. Don't be, don't be faithful to Pastor Julia. Don't be faithful to Pastor Bobby. Don't be faithful to ACC. Be faithful to God, he's saying. Submit to God. And can I tell you this? Submit to God. Resist the devil and he flees from you. Amen. Come on now. Resist him and he'll flee from you. That, thing, that means he turns around and he leaves. Amen. There comes a time. Come on. There comes a time that he leaves us. He will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your heart, you sinners. Purify your hearts, double mind. Here, oh man, look at that right there. Double mind. Oh, look what I wrote. Let me see what I wrote. I know I wrote something. Double mind, double minded, double minded. Oh, I wrote, be honest, be true. You really ain't all that. Huh? Huh. <laughs> Amen? That's what he's saying. Be true. Be honest with yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I love this right here because he says, and, and he kind of stumped me there for a minute, but, but the more I, I studied it, look what he says. He says, let your mourning and your laughter be turned, let your laughter be turned to mourning. Wow. So quit laughing and start crying. What does he mean? Oh, your pride for self. Take it serious. He says, let your joy turn to gloom. Be honest. Be serious about yourself. Not only pride, sin. Be serious about your sin. Be serious about yourself. If you can't do it, be honest. If you don't know how, be honest. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And I give without partiality. You know what that means? That's like going to go in the corral. And there's just rooms full of food, buffet. Choose what you need, he says. He says, but have a heart. Acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge your downfall. Acknowledge your inabilities, your frailties. Acknowledge these things, he said. Amen? Because when you do this, guess what happens? You shift from yourself to God. Amen? You move from independence to dependence on God. Amen? And can I tell you, you've been, oh, we depend on ourselves a lot. Amen? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So this morning, friends, my question is, Am I prideful? You know, when I first got into speaking, I used to ask my wife every Sunday, how do I do? How do I do? I sound like T.D. Jakes. <laughs> how do I do? How do I do? And she, she told me one day, you better stop. You better stop. Why? Because I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just like you. I have to be careful too. Right? The Bible says, that, therefore, let any man who thinks he stand take heed, lest he fall. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I have, to bind a, I have to bind a strong man too, just like you do. So my question is this morning, are we prideful? The answer I'm going to answer for you is yes. Pride, but here, listen to this. Pride will often keep you from admitting this. Wow. So you, right away you say, no, I'm not. <laughs> Pride keeps you from admitting to. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Amen. Come on. <coughs> and I know it sounds, listen, church, I know it sounds hard. But when we acknowledge this, we're able to grab it by the horns and we're able to tell it what to do. That's it doesn't right. tell me what to do. That's right. Amen. I'm, I'm Hispanic. Amen. I have pride, amen, orgullo, amen, del corazón, papa. I have pride. I am a prideful Hispanic. And I, too, have to sit on it sometimes. I, too, have to tell myself, Lord, if you don't help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. So we're all prideful to some degree. Pride will keep you from admitting that you need it. Pride will keep you from admitting that you really do need help. Oh, that you really are 
hurting, that you really are tired, that you really don't know what to do, that you really do not have it under control. Can I tell you, friends, that when we find ourselves in such a state of mind that all we have to do is call on Jesus and Jesus said I will take a heart of stone and make it as wool as cotton. God delivers us from a prideful state of mind and brings us into a place of humility. Amen? Amen. So moment of truth. Amen. Let us examine ourselves today. Let us examine ourselves. Have you ever tried to do things in your own strength? Have you ever tried to be your own God. Mm. Come on, isn't that good, man? Let us take a moment and ask ourselves, has pride really affected my life? Mm. Stand to your feet this morning. what he says. I love that. Because the last portion of that scripture says that he who humbles himself the Lord will lift up this morning. I'm going to ask everyone in the house this morning to bow your heads this morning. This is strictly between you and God. Neighbor, close your eyes. Quit peeking. Mm -hmm. This is simply between you and God. If that word has spoken to you, Shine or shown some light in an area of your life this morning. Will you just raise your hand right there where you're at? Will you, I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. Thank you for your honesty, church. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for the confirmation that God's word was on point for today. And if you're here this morning and you've raised your hand, I want you to know that there is a hope of repentance. Amen. And I pray that this word will just go with you today. That this word will chase you down faster than the blessings. That it will remind you of our state of mind. Repeat this scripture. Repeat this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive us for a prideful state. Forgive us the times we try to do it ourselves. We try to be our own God. Live our own lives. Forgive us for selfishness. And give us, Lord, a heart of God. Of the mind of Christ. Forgive us when we fail you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.